First off, I think we'll talk about squamous cell carcinoma before coming back to basal cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma, as you may recall, typically is on a spectrum of development or evolution, starting with actinic keratoses, then squamous cell carcinoma in C2, and then squamous cell carcinoma. So actinic keratoses are described as these discrete, dry, sandpapery, um, skin-colored or yellow-brown papules. They're incredibly common, very hard to see just visually until you reach in close, look very closely at the skin and then rub your fingers on the lesion and you'll feel that sandpapery um, lesion, especially on the scalp of folks um, who are, are balding or uh, bald uh, or on the backs of the hands. 1% of actinic keratoses will evolve into squamous cell carcinoma in C2 per year. So if you got 50 of them, there's a 50% chance that one of those might evolve into squamous cell carcinoma in C2 um, each year. When you've got squamous cell carcinoma in C2, especially a, a background of several of them, these well-demarcated pink scaly patules, uh, patches, it's called Bowen's disease. And a minority of these squamous cell carcinoma in C2 lesions can evolve <clears throat> into squamous cell carcinoma itself, which of course is more malignant and uh, can be aggressive. So a number of different subtypes of squamous cell carcinoma, and we'll talk about them in a minute. And these can be eroded, friable, hyperkeratotic papules, or plaques, or nodules. So a lot of different varieties of squamous cell carcinoma to be mindful of. The risk factors for squamous cell carcinoma and actinic keratoses are things we've talked about. Fair complexion. Uh, Folks who have chronic wounds in a certain area, squamous cell carcinoma in C2 may develop within those chronic wounds. Chronic sun exposure, like being a farmer. HPV, again, keeps showing up in different places as, uh, as a cause of different types of skin lesions, including squamous cell carcinoma. And a smoking history also plays a role. So here's the subtypes. We have the nodular type, uh, shown here in the top right. Exophytic type, which is more representative of the picture down there at the bottom. Again, exophytic means growing out of the skin. Verrucous, which is not shown here. And then a cutaneous horn, which is this hyperkeratinized plug that can grow out of the lesion. Um, uh, and it's uh, very firm, very hard. As we discussed with melanoma, if a patient starts to describe pain or paresthesias like pruritus, uh, within their lesion that may signify deeper invasion into the dermis and perineural invasion, so that may be a bad prognostic sign. You're going to diagnose this by performing a shave biopsy or perhaps a punch biopsy. The treatment is going to depend on if you've got actinic keratosis or if you actually have skin cancer. So actinic keratosis and uh, squamous cell carcinoma in C2, you can get by with just cryosurgery, just basically freezing the lesion. You can use 5-FU cream or a Miquimod cream and just close observation over time. Once you've developed into a squamous cell carcinoma, you, you're gonna to need to perform an excision, and you may or may not need to use Mohs surgery depending upon the type of lesion that you have. So now let's talk about basal cell carcinoma, the other type of non-melanoma skin cancer, and it also happens to be the most common type of skin cancer, so you really have to make sure you know this one. It's locally invasive and aggressive, however, it's actually relatively benign insofar as it rarely metastasizes. So you may find patients who have basal cell carcinoma, but it's not an emergency. Um, you certainly want to get it dealt with and get it resected, but it's not something where um, you're very concerned about uh, long-term outcomes uh, as you would for melanoma. 90% of the time, they occur on the face. Our patient's got it on his nose, so let's uh, keep that in mind. Multiple different subtypes again, and you have to just be familiar with the names here when you're thinking about the board exam. But the subtypes are the superficial multicentric, which is shown here in the top picture. Pigmented, again, these can be very black, brown, dark reddish uh, uh, lesions, as you're seeing here in number two. An ulcerating lesion, which can have rolled borders and a central hollowing uh, out ulcerated area. Not shown here is the sclerosing subtype and then the nodular subtype we'll see on the next slide. Here's our nodular subtype, which again, is you're gonna feel a palpable uh, subdermal uh, indurated area. It's going to have some telangiectasias on the skin, and there may be an ulcerated area in the middle as well. The nodular and ulcerating subtypes are pretty similar to one another. 
So going back to look at our patient, there's no evidence of pruritus, and that's pretty typical for basal cell carcinoma lesions. This patient spends most of his day in the sun, in sun exposed areas. So we're thinking about any kind of skin cancer and basal cell carcinoma would be one of the more common types. And again, a dome shaped pearly translucent papule on the tip of the nose, on the face, as we mentioned, with visible telangiectasias and probably some somewhat uh, rolled up borders. This is really a very good example of a nodular type of basal cell carcinoma. So with all that information in mind, I think we can safely say that our patient has a basal cell carcinoma, presumably the nodular subtype. Let's just review a few key points about basal cell carcinoma. As I said, it's the most common skin cancer. It's locally invasive and aggressive, but rarely metastasizes, and 90% of the time it is on the face. Treatment is gonna be uh, excision. You don't typically need to use Mohs surgery because again, it's not a very aggressive um, lesion in terms of meta distant metastasis or recurrence. You can use electrodesiccation and curatage as well. And shown there on the right is a reminder of our five different subtypes.